Uh, Chris! Yes, Sand? I've got someone for you to meet. I don't want to meet anyone, Sand. I'm preparing for an experiment. Yes, but you are really going to want to meet this person. Why? Because he's a lot like you. A lot like me? Well, in that case... Ah! Sand, this is not in any way like me. I mean, I don't have that enormous tongue, or these huge hands, or those ridiculous feet. Chris, meet your homunculus. Or, as I like to call him, Homuncia Chris. That is quite a good name. This is a homunculus. It's my body, but it highlights the places where I have the most sensory neurons by making those areas humongous. All over your body, you have sensory neurons, which enable you to feel things. They give you a sense of touch, but there are more of them in some parts of your body than in others. And this homunculus, Homuncia Chris, yes, shows that you have more sensory neurons in your hands, feet, lips and tongue than you do in the rest of your body. And because there are more sensory neurons in these places, it makes them much more sensitive. Think about how it feels to have a piece of fluff in your mouth. It's intolerable. <laughs> but if you have a piece of fluff in your belly button, you probably don't even notice. <laughs> to prove which parts of the body have the most sensory neurons, here's an experiment you can try at home. You just need another human and a blindfold. Right, Chris, put this on and lie face down on the bench. Now, I need Chris to be blindfolded while I prod him with my fingers. Prod me? I said lie down. I'm going to prod him, and then I'm going to ask him how many fingers I'm using. And I'm going to start with his hand. OK, Chris, are you ready? Yes. Chris, tell me how many fingers I'm touching your hand with. Two. Four. One. Well done, but I expected Chris to get all that right because his hands are loaded with sensory neurons and the bit of his brain that gets information from his hand is very large. So your hands are very accurate at detecting what they're touching. But now we're going to move to his back. One. Maybe two. One. That was much less successful, Chris. That's because you have far fewer sensory neurons there, which makes sense if you think about it. You don't need your back to be as sensitive as your hands. That's very true, and your sensory neurons aren't just for testing how many fingers are prodding your back. Your millions of sensory neurons get loads of information about the world around you, telling you if things are sharp, soft, hot or cold. But how do they do it? Well, we're going to show you by heading to... The beach! To show you how your sensory neurons detect the difference between hot and cold, Zan and I are going for a swim. Now, because the sea is cold, I've decided to pre-acclimatise, and I'm already pretty cold myself. Zan, on the other hand, has taken a different strategy. Zan? Now, my strategy is to get as warm as possible before I get in the freezing ocean. Come on, you've had enough time in there. Let's get going. Five more minutes, Chris. There's still a little warmth left in the hottie. Quite enough time. You've been in there an hour and a half. Give me that. Come on. It's freezing out here. OK, are you ready, Zan? I'm boiling. I can't wait to get in. All right, last run into rotten egg. Three, two, one. Ow! 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 Ah! This is embarrassing. Oh, lovely! Freezing! It's absolutely tropical! Why is your bit of ocean 